Hello there, what's up everybody? This is your nutritionist on the go, Kamal Deep Singh Ochla from Iru Diet Nutrition. And I'm specially making this video uh, in regards to the epidemic situation, the widespread of coronavirus, the COVID-19 in the rest of the world as well as the current situation on in our own country in India. So in this video, I would like to share with you with all the things that are going on under the name of COVID-19. A lot of misinformation, a lot of false information, a lot of self-interpretation. Now, before starting the video, I would like to clear my stand on this COVID-19 on my perspective. I am not an immunologist. I am not a virologist. I'm not an expert in disease control, but as a nutritionist, a therapeutic nutritionist and a clinical dietitian practicing in a medical firm, it is my responsibility to share with you guys the knowledge that I have. I do not know uh, too deep about the whole situation, but I will share my two cents with you guys. So as of I'm making this video exactly in the mid of March, a lot of stats are going to change, a lot of things, a lot of facts and researches are going to change after I make this and post this video. So I hope you guys stay up to date. And this is what I actually want to share with you guys. So as we all know, we are right now in a crisis situation, in a high alert situation. Uh, this is a widespread disease, COVID-19. It started in Wuhan city of China in the wet market. It, trans uh, it uh, got transferred from a particular white wild animal uh, to another wild animal species and then it came to human species. But now the spread of COVID-19 is specifically from human to human. So. I see a lot of people spreading misinformation about eating non-vegetarian food or eating eggs or this. There is nothing like that. If you're drinking milk, milk is also an animal product. If you're eating eggs and chicken and meat, it is also an animal product. Right now, the disease is not spreading from animals to humans. It is spreading from a human to human. It is contagious. It is spreading by uh, a close connection by a close physical presence with someone who is actually infected by this coronavirus. So when this started, when these cases started to come up in November, the Chinese government actually tried to put a blanket on that. That was the first initial mistake that I would think. But you know, whenever we see uh, any type of new virus, wide spreading among the population. So we are not familiar with its mode of uh, transmission. We are not familiar with the effects. It takes some time to come into notice, but initially the government tried to suppress and not bring this thing into media, but later on they had to when situation actually uh, escalated a lot. Same thing happened in the United States of America as well. Some of the cases were reported in early December, which were not taken seriously. But by the end of the year 2019, by the new year, uh, it was clear that some hard, strict measures had to be taken. And China very well did. I mean, they built a thousand bed hospital to quarantine and keep patients that are suffering from uh, coronavirus COVID-19 in isolation and give them whatever treatment that they had available, whatever medical support, they built that hospital in 10 days and uh, immediately started working on another hospital that is uh, that had 1600 beds. So uh, a remark, a big praise to the Chinese government who actually tried their level best to contain the situation. When the initial reports of coronavirus came, I myself did a mistake of taking it lightly because maybe I thought that the Chinese government is putting so much effort, they have imposed uh, quarantine and isolation and restricted air travel and they are building hospitals and all sort, of, uh, all sort of these things. I actually thought they might be able to contain it. But that was my mistake to misjust the situation. And this is the same mistake many of Indians are doing right now, still taking coronavirus as not serious at all. So coming up next was the spread of this disease from Wuhan to rest of the world because the symptoms were unknown, it wasn't declared. So uh, people traveled from China to all over the world, including Europe and then from Europe, um, some of the tourists belonging to Italy, nationalists or nationals of Italy, they came to India and that's where we got affected the most. So as per today, uh, the stats which I have read till now, the situation is that 1.7 lakh of cases have been reported of coronavirus infection, people who are detected positive for this COVID-19, for, for coronavirus, sorry. 
uh, the death toll is about 6,500 amongst them. Out of this 1.7 lakh, about 77,000 people have recovered. So there is a high hope. Even though we do not have any medication for this particular new strain of the coronavirus, who is from the family of SARS and MERS uh, diseases, which have you know caused a lot of havoc and outbreak in the past. But even though we do not have medicine, but still the recovery rate for coronavirus infected patient is very good. It's very high. So the active cases stand about 85,000 out of which about 93% of the cases are cases of mild symptom and they have a high chances of recovery. 7% cases are very critical. So when you put these facts and put these stats in order, we get about 7 to 8% of mortality rate. So 93, 92 to 93% of recovery rate, that is all without any vaccination. And some countries are doing remarkable R&D. Uh, I've heard reports from, uh, from Argentina, from Israel, that they have developed a vaccine, but to put up into production line, and uh, we do not have actually time for conducting any clinical research, to be honest. So uh, we can't do an in-depth study of the new medicine that has been created for COVID-19. But surely we can only, uh, you know, give a test on small group of people just to see that it doesn't cause any adverse effect or it doesn't aggravate the situation. So right now we do not have any long-term clinical trials, time for that and all, uh, all sort of things. This is a crisis situation. So. It is expected that within the coming three to four months, a vaccination will be available in market. Uh, wonder how that's going to work. The stats in India are also starting to add up. Till date, when I'm making this video, 115 cases of coronavirus have been reported, out of which two people have actually died in India, which is something to worry about. Uh, even a lower percentage of mortality is still a shock to the society, is still a shock to the family. I pay my respects for those who have passed away and I wish my best for those who are uh, getting a treatment for this disease and who are uh, fighting with this infection. Uh, out of 115, 13 cases are recovered, 100 cases are still active. The mild and critical ratio is almost similar, 93 is to 7. Uh, again, I have to say this, do not panic. We are in, in a panic mode right now. The media is trying to scare the hell out of us. It's not like that. With a recovery rate of 93%, are, are, do you have a chance of being infected? Yes, of course, you have a, be, a chance of being infected by coronavirus, the COVID-19. Will you die? 7% of the chances are that you might die. And 93% of the chances is that you might survive even if you get this virus. So there is nothing to panic about. Okay, please calm down your nerves. In a state of panic, you might actually die because it's gonna put stress on your immune system. So, till now, people have, 92% of the people have recovered, but because this viral stain is new, we do not know much about coronavirus. Uh, will it come into re-emission after a couple of months? We don't know. What effect has it caused uh, on, on the respiratory system of the person who has recovered uh, there? there is said to be about an 8 to 15 percent of permanent respiratory damage that this virus has caused to people who have recovered. Uh, stats are officially not been confirmed. Uh, still, there are some things to look after because we do not know much about the virus. So this virus is being spread from person to person. So obviously, if you know someone who might be having symptoms of coronavirus, you should restrict the amount of contact with that person. If someone in your home, you have to keep them isolated or the best thing is you provide them with medical support, with medical care, whatever the doctors have to offer, they will help you with it. Even we do not have a cure, but still we have uh, a, a good amount of in health infrastructure in some cities. And uh, right now the situation is not that worst, but it can turn ugly anytime. We do not have much facility in all the hospitals. We do have so many hospitals throughout the country, but how many hospitals can actually keep and uh, keep a patient in an isolation and take care for them? 